is up, everybody? It's JT Sports. I'm at you guys with another seven round mock draft. This mock draft, I'm here with the LA Chargers. And for the LA Chargers, the LA Chargers have a couple of holes that they need to fill. The first hole will be the need of a linebacker. They do need to find another linebacker there on the defensive side of the football. I also feel they could add some more depth inside, probably find another tackle to pair up with um jerry tillery down there and for the most part this la chargers defense is going to end up being one of the best defenses in the nfl they already have a pretty loaded secondary they signed chris harris jr and free agency you also pair him up with um casey hayward and Duran james so i mean that secondary for the la chargers is going to be absolutely lights out then you already pair that up with the fact they have two of the best edge rushers in the game and um joey bolsa and um Melvin Ingram. Now, on the offensive side of the football, um, I think they're pretty legit on the offensive side of the football. I mean, the receiver position needs some work. Other than Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, they don't know who their third wide receiver is going to be. Now, they lost Travis Benjamin. Um, they didn't bring him back, so they need another guy to fill that hole there at that third wide receiver position. I also feel they need to bring in another halfback as well. So, before I get into it, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel I'll below NFL videos and college football videos daily. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media pages. My Twitter and Instagram is JT Sports underscore. Make sure you guys follow me on both of those. I post bonus content daily on both of those pages. The links to those will be down in the description down below. So. With their first round selection, sixth overall, I have them select their linebacker, Isaiah Simmons, out of the University of Clemson. Now, a lot of people have them drafting either Tua or Justin Herbert. Now, me personally, if Tua isn't available, then I go ahead and pass up on Justin Herbert and go ahead and select linebacker Isaiah Simmons out of the University of Clemson. Um, I don't know why a lot of people keep on overlooking Tyrod Taylor. Like, Tyrod Taylor is a scrub or something. Like, Tyrod Taylor has had success in the NFL. He's won in Buffalo. He's been to the playoffs. I mean, Tyrod Taylor is not a bad quarterback. I mean, he's not going to turn the football over. Yeah, he may not take a lot of shots downfield, but I mean, you can win games. You can win the Super Bowl with Tyrod Taylor. So I don't understand why people keep overlooking the fact that Tyrod Taylor is just like a bridge quarterback. Tyrod Taylor is far from a bridge quarterback. He is a starting caliber quarterback in the NFL, and um, I think he should be the long-term quarterback for the Chargers, at least for the next couple of seasons. So I think they should go ahead and take Isaiah Simmons. Um, Isaiah Simmons, adding him to that defense would just make them have a freak of a defense because then you'll have two players who can play multiple positions. You'll have Darren James who can play safety, corner. Then you're going to have Isaiah Simmons who can play linebacker, slot cornerback, outside cornerback, edge rusher, and safety. So, I mean, I just don't understand how you can end up passing up on Isaiah Simmons if he's available. I mean, bringing in Isaiah Simmons will make this L.A. Chargers defense really Really interesting. They will most likely end up having a top five defense. I mean, you're pairing them up with Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa, Durant James, Chris Harris Jr. I mean, just think about how scary that defense will be with Isaiah Simmons on it. So I think if you're the LA Chargers, if I'm the general manager for the Chargers, I'm picking Isaiah Simmons, bump getting a quarterback. Um, it's really no point in drafting a quarterback when you have a two-ball window. I think the Chargers have a little bit of a two-ball window, and I don't really think it makes a lot of sense to draft a guy over Tyrod Taylor, which Tyrod Taylor is not a bad starter. Tyrod Taylor is a guy who can get the job done. He's had success in the NFL, and he is a solid quarterback. Quarterback. With their second round selection, 37th overall, having a sled in the offensive tackle, is Zero. Cleveland out of Boise State University. This guy has great size, great length, great athleticism as well. He's also really balanced as well. He's probably one of the most he's probably one of the more on the look off to linemen that we have in this draft class. Um, I have a second round grade on him. A couple of people have a second round grade on him as well. And for the LA Chargers, the offensive line was a little bit of a problem last year. And for the Chargers, I think picking Cleveland up would benefit the offensive line there. And I think this guy should most likely end up being a starter for the Chargers. Now, with the third round selection, 71st overall, has him selected in wide receiver Gabriel Davis out of UCF. Now, a lot of people have a second round grade on Gabriel Davis. I'm not in that department. I have like a third round grade on him. Um, I think he has... 
um, potential to be a okay wide receiver in the NFL. I don't think he really has that high of a ceiling, but I do think he's good enough to be taken the third overall or well, the third round for the LA Chargers. For the, simply for the fact that I think this guy could end up being a third option for the LA Chargers, end up competing for that third wide receiver spot. Um, this is a guy who has pretty solid hands. He's not really a burner downfield, in my opinion, but I mean, this guy runs okay routes. He creates so, solid separation. He has solid hands, so he should be able to be a third wide receiver for the LA Chargers in the third round, no pun intended. Now, the fourth round selection, I have one of my favorite names to pronounce is defensive tackle Benito Jones out of Ole Miss. Now, Benito Jones is he's strong, he's quick, and he's really fast. I mean, this guy is really agile for his size. Now, the downside with Benito Jones is the fact that he doesn't know how to handle double-team blocks. So, basically, if you double-team him, you're basically going to take him out of the game. That's something that he really struggles with. Now, going to the LA Chargers, I don't think that will be too big of a problem since the fact that he'll be right alongside of Jerry Tillery right next to him. So, I don't really think that should be too much of a problem there and being able to, to handle those double-team blocks. We have another guy that should be able to take some of that away from you or limit some of those double team blocks or the impact and open up holes for you. But Benito Jones, man, this guy is fast. He's quick. He's agile. This guy is very fast. He also has a very good pass rush um, skill set as well. So, I mean, Benito Jones will be a really good pick for the LA Chargers to pair up with Jerry Tillery. Now, the fifth round selection, 151st overall, I have them selecting tight end Adam Trontrum. Trotman out of Dayton University. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. It's glad that now I'm recording this. I'm sorry. But for um a good bit, a lot of people consider him the best tight end in his draft class because of his speed and his athleticism. But I mean, he's a small school guy, a small school guy, so I don't really know how comfortable I feel at drafting him. Um, high like in the second round and third round. I saw a lot of people projecting him there. I don't really think he'll be that I don't really think he's worth that high of a draft pick. I think the fifth round will be a little bit better simply for the fact that, look, he looks like a man amongst boys playing for Dayton. But, I mean, I really want to see what he would have done if he was playing against Division One talent and going against some of the best guys in college football versus what he was facing against Dayton. So, I mean, I, he's a small school guy. The level of competition really scares me, especially when it comes to the tight end position. So, I think for the Chargers, if they get him in the first or fifth round, it would be a good pickup because then you could um, run two tight end sets with him and Hunter Henry. And then plus, if you're not able to find get a long-term deal with Hunter Henry worked out since he is playing on the franchise tag and Hunter Henry ends up walking away uh, and free agency next year, then you end up having a good, solid replacement for him. Now, after six-round selection, I have them selecting the halfback DJ Dallas out of the University of Miami. Now, they lost um, Melvin Gordon in free agency. Now, they feel pretty confident in Austin and Eckler, but I still feel they need another halfback to compliment him. And I think halfback DJ Dallas would be a perfect fit for the L.A. Chargers. I mean, DJ Dallas, man, this guy is physical. He's stout. He's really good catching the ball out of the backfield. And as a Miami Hurricane fan, man, we really screwed over DJ Dallas. DJ Dallas probably could have had like 1,500 yards, maybe 2,000 rushing yards, kind of like a J.K. Dobbins caliber season if the offensive line was a lot better than what it was last season for the Hurricanes. So, I mean, DJ Dallas is a really exceptional halfback. I think a lot of people are really sleeping on DJ Dallas. And going to the Chargers there, he's a guy who would come in on, like, short down situations when it when it's, like, third and short or something like that. And he can end up being a really good one-two punch or a really good fill-in for Austin Eckler when they need to give Austin Eckler a break. He can also catch the ball out of the backfield as well. Um, the thing with him is that he doesn't really have a lot of experience when it comes to the halfback position. Initially, he came to the Miami Hurricanes program is kind of like a um athlete really he played like a bunch of different positions when he was coming out of high school so for dj dallas he's still a little bit raw when it comes to the half half position uh, sometimes he doesn't always find the holes and he doesn't really have a lot of experience and his awareness isn't quite there as well he also has fumbling issues as well that's something that he also struggled with is ball security so i think the sixth round pick for the la chargers should be dj dallas i think that'd be a pretty nice selection there now with their seven round selection i have this letting cornerback miles bryant out of the university of washington now miles bryant without a doubt is a slot cornerback in the nfl he's 5'8 or 5'9 somewhere around that range he's like 184 pounds um 
And basically, slot cornerback, I don't really see a guy this size playing outside. I mean, people are just going to throw jump balls and up balls on him all day if he plays outside. So I, I think it will be making more sense to put him at that slot cornerback position. And for the L.A. Chargers, I mean, maybe this is a guy who would come in and contribute on special teams, maybe. But this is basically a guy who would come in and bring in some depth when it comes to that cornerback position, specifically in the slot. So this is it for my L.A. Chargers several-round mock draft. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section down below. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.